What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. This is my first look for week four of the NFL season on DraftKings and FanDuel. We'll go position by position, just taking a first glance at the prices, the matchups, and things like that. We'll put a lot of progress through it, more so for a single entry tournament build. And it's a little bit too early in the week for me to run projections or anything, so no optimizer at the end. But look out for the core plays video later on in the week, and we'll go over it then. And also, if this happens to be your first time here, my name is Chris Pinnell. I break down NFL DFS each and every single week on this channel. So if you do end up enjoying today's content, even if you don't, consider leaving a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you want to be rude to me in the comments, be mean, call me ugly. I don't care either way. But I would love to hear from you. And as always, if you do like what you see on the screen, it's all available for free, completely free. For a week over on the patreon link down below in the description or the pinned comment for that but it's got all the data sets that i look at each and every single week i have the whole slate statted out if you want to use that for props be my guest projections optimizer ownership projections things like that cheat sheet they do cover other sports as well including nascar in the mlb so if you like it you can stay if not tell me to kick rocks i don't care but let's dive into it and up top we have the man josh allen at 8200 bucks facing off versus tua and the miami dolphins and what looks to be the game of the week at least total wise we're sitting at 53 and a half which is the highest on the slate we have a three point spread in the bills favor 28.25 implied team total for the bills and 25.25 for the miami dolphins so you're definitely looking to get some exposure to this game as of right now, it's hard to say who is going to be the cash or tournament options, and that's why we do the final look video later on in the week, because obviously I haven't ran any ownership or anything like that. But it's going to be tough to avoid this game overall. We have really good weapons on both sides. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Dalton Kincaid, Dawson Knox, which I realize that it's a little bit less exciting. And then you also have James Cook. But on the Miami side, who just put up 70 points last week versus the Denver Broncos, you have Tua. Tyreek Hill, hopefully Jalen Waddle, Raheem Moster, Devonta Chain, who absolutely murdered this slate last week. I forget what his ownership was, but if you played him, you're insane, but congratulations. <laughs> and while this team's not going to put up 70 points every single week, their offense has elite weapons, their defense is bad enough to where they'll give up points, and this is a good game to target overall for tournaments. Cash games, I'd probably lean Tua over Allen just because of the price discount, but I think both are fine. Justin Herbert with a 27 point implied team total here just about facing a pretty easy matchup here versus Las Vegas Raiders defense. Unfortunately, no Mike Williams in this one or throughout the entire season towards ACL. So sucks. He just always gets caught up with injuries. The talent's there, but just can't stay on the field, unfortunately. But Joshua Palmer will slide in for his wide receiver too. And we have seen Justin Herbert able to get him the ball and still able to have success. And Keenan Allen's going to get hyper targeted. You have Quentin Johnson, the rookie double tight ends over there and then i'm not sure if austin eckler is going to play or not doesn't really matter but i do think the chargers look pretty good here now the run back options are pretty simple if you want to go with josh jacobs you can but i prefer either jacoby myers or Devontae adams i'm hoping jimmy g plays because i trust him a little bit more to be able to feed those guys the ball over a guy like aiden o'connell who i believe might be the starter i think brian hoyer exists over there but i think o'connell would be the guy that would make the most sense so we'll see what happens there hoping for jimmy g to clear concussion protocol but Either way, it shouldn't affect the Chargers offense. They'll be able to put up points here. Then we have Kirk Cousins, 7100 bucks on the road in Carolina. I prefer him in home games, but I think every single week we have to have interest in these Vikings games because the defense is terrible, but the offense has some really fun options. And Kirk Cousins is no stranger just to slinging the ball this season, averaging nearly 45 pass attempts per game, nearly 360 passing yards and three touchdowns per game. He's got the best wide receiver in football. Justin Jefferson, you have the exciting rookie Jordan Addison, KJ Osborne, TJ Hawkinson, one of the best tight ends in football. Honestly, I wouldn't be too surprised if TJ Hawkinson ends up being the best fantasy producer at the tight end position this season. So for GPPs, I think Cousins makes a lot of sense here. And you have some obvious run back options with either if the run game with Miles Sanders or you have Adam Thielen, who has been busy the past two weeks. Joe Burrow, if you're look, looking to get a little bit gross here, I realize we are dealing with that calf issue. Did survive the game Monday night versus the Los Angeles Rams. Obviously still not looking like, you know, top tier Joe Burrow, but at 6,500 bucks, we are getting a discount. And this Titans defense, you can throw on them. You can't run. And we have good weapons to throw to in T. Higgins and Jamar Chase and Deshaun Watson. As bad as he's looked this year, even he was able to have a great game versus this past defense. I think 27 for 33, 300 yards, two touchdowns. If he can do that, I think Joe Burrow hobbled at 6500 bucks and at least hit value. The run back options suck, though. So, I mean, you don't have to do it, but it's not great. Then we have two cheap quarterbacks here. Russell Wilson at 5800 bucks, 
Yeah, the Denver Broncos taking on the Chicago Bears. I think that's the battle of mid. Even mid might be, be a little bit too generous. The Bears got blown out last week, and the Broncos gave up 70 points. So something's going to give here. They're either going to score zero points or they're going to score 60 points. I'm hoping it's the latter, just because I have interest in this game. A little bit from the Denver Broncos side of things. So there's not really many runback options I want from the Chicago Bears. I guess DJ Moore if I had to. Cole Komet, maybe. But with Russell Wilson, we have Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy. You can get some cheap stacks there versus a very beautiful defense. And then Matthew Stafford at 5700 bucks, taking on the Colts pass defense, which definitely has some holes. It's pretty easy just to make stacks here. I mean, we know where the ball is going to in this offense. It's either going to be Puka Nakua, Tutu Atwell, or Tyler Higby for the most part. Van Jefferson's a ghost these days. And then the run game is obviously Kyron Williams, but he'll be involved in the passing game a little bit as well. So if you're looking for some cheap stacks, Stafford is averaging over 300 yards passing this season. I know it was really ugly on Monday night. That offensive line could not block for nothing versus the Bengals, but he is cheap, he's stackable, and it's kind of gross, but I don't hate it for GPPs. All right, moving over to our build here. Several quarterbacks I like, and do not copy and paste this. First off, it's Tuesday. And second off, I always say, if you're copying lineups you see on YouTube, you deserve to lose. We're just kind of building as we go through it, talking about some of the players that we talked about and trying to see if we can put something together that fits using the kind of rules that I would want for a single entry tournament build. Apply that to your own favorite plays, your own lineups and things like that. But anyway, the quarterbacks here, there's several options I like. I'm going to try to get gross though. I feel like everybody that does these kind of videos is probably going to go with like either that Buffalo Miami game or the Chargers Vegas game. And while we can still get pieces from that one, let's avoid the quarterbacks and let's go with a grosser stack just for funsies. And we'll roll with Matthew Stafford at 5700 bucks. He looked awful on Monday night, so hopefully that will keep some ownership away. But I like the spot here versus Indy. And moving on to the ball carriers, I feel like this is the least amount of running backs that we've had on a first look video, because usually there's like a laundry list of very similar plays that I think are all viable, but I wasn't really liking a lot of them this week, either based off of matchups or their pricing. So for the specific build that we are going with, we have Matthew Stafford. So we went with an ugly, gross quarterback that is cheap. So that means we can allocate our funds more so to the running back or wide receiver position. Now, the wide receivers with Matthew Stafford are not that expensive. Puka, I don't remember his price tag. I think he's in the 6K range. Then 2-2, I'm going to imagine it's like around 5K. I forget, but I know he's cheap enough. So that means we have some money to spend with because I'm probably going to run it back with a guy like Michael Pittman. That makes no sense for that specific stack that we're rolling with or leaving as Zach Moss would work. So we got money, and that means CMC looks pretty interesting here at 9200 bucks. I don't normally spend up at the running back position. Typically, Wide receivers, which not saying I'm not going to spend up a wide receiver this week. I, I'm certainly going to, but we're just rolling with the story of the bill that we are going with right now to make sense for roster construction purposes. So CMC is looking pretty interesting here. And I know it's a small sample size, but obviously it's not been a small sample size of his career. CMC, pretty darn good at football. And the 49ers are 14 point favorites at home, 29 point implied team total. 120 rushing yards per game for CMC, 20 rushing attempts, nearly six yards per carry, four targets per game, which equates to just over a 14% target share. This is elite usage. We should get anywhere from like 20, 25 total opportunities. The only concern here would be blowout and Eli Mitchell takes over, but if they are blowing them out, I'm assuming CMC already had a decent game. And I will tell you what, you cannot expect blowouts and you just can't build for that in your lineups because I'm sure everybody last week was expecting the Cowboys to blow out the Cardinals. They're 12 and a half point favorites. Guess what? The Cowboys lose that game. So if you were avoiding some pieces, which I realized the Cowboys busted, but I'm just saying you cannot, just because they're big favorites, you cannot expect blowouts. Teams can hang around and you want to miss out on good plays because you were scared of a blowout and it never ends up happening. A lot of times if they do blow them out, probably the best plays in that game did go off anyway. So it doesn't even matter. So 9,200 bucks. I do like CMC. Uh, Raheem Mostert, 6,500 bucks. Him and a chain went absolutely nuclear last week versus the Denver Broncos. Now, is that sustainable? No, I think they combined for like eight touchdowns. I'm sure that will never happen again. But Mostert, we know when he gets opportunity, he is typically good with it. Just he gets hurt a lot and that's the only downside with him, but he is not hurt right now. And he's averaging just under six yards per carry, 80 rushing yards per game, getting close to 15 carries per game and also a handful of targets, which is nice. He's on a great offense with two and the Dolphins are just humming along. So I will take the RB1 in that offense, although with the way how Chain played last week, he is definitely going to work his way into the mix even more. But Mostert, in his own right, was good as well. So they're just both going to get a good amount of work, and I think there's room for both of them to succeed. So I will keep riding the Mostert train. I played him in pretty much all my tournament lineups last week, and obviously that panned out pretty well. 
James Cook at 6,300 bucks. If you are not playing the passing attack here, the Bills are obviously going to put up some points. Very high total, 28 and a quarter this week. Three point favorites at home. James Cook is going to get you 15 plus touches here. So if you're just looking for volume and a good matchup versus Miami, there you go. Kyron Williams, $6,000. He plays literally every snap in this offense. It's a good matchup versus the Indianapolis Colts. He's going to be using the passing game as well. It's just hard to get a running back at $6,000 in offense and a good matchup that plays literally every single snap. So if you're just looking for that, Williams is your guy. He will be on the field. The production might not be amazing, but he will be out there. Zach Moss on the flip side of this game, $6,000 looked great last week versus Baltimore. Had a great game. I believe he caught a wheel route touchdown. Moss the guy. Go figure his last name is Moss. He's out there mossing people, but... 44 carries per game this year, 105 rushing yards. Not sure if Anthony Richardson is going to play it or not. If he does, I think it hurts him a little bit just because we know AR is going to take goal line opportunities away from him or just rushing yards or rushing attempts in general. So I'd actually prefer if Minshew kept starting, but obviously if Richardson's good to go, he's going to be the quarterback out there. So just something to monitor. Although I feel like after two weeks, his concussion will probably be able to clear protocol. Uh, Miles Sanders, 5,800 bucks. Good matchup here versus Minnesota. It's not pretty, but he does get volume. Now, the Panthers did throw the ball just about 60 times last week with Andy Dalton. They were trailing in that game. But if they can keep it somewhat close, that would bode well for Sanders. But he's getting the majority of the touches back here. And he is averaging six targets per game with a 15% target share. So, 500 bucks in a good matchup versus Minnesota. He's definitely playable at home. Then on the flip side of this game, once again, we have Alexander Madison, $5,800. So Cam Akers, I'm assuming, is going to be active this week. Madison did not look bad last week, which was nice. I'm assuming he is still going to be your featured back here, but no running back pretty much plays all the snaps besides a few, like we just mentioned with Kyron Williams. But if Madison can get us 15-plus touches versus Carolina, he's a three-and-a-half point favorite. If there is upside here. We just need to get him into the end zone, which he was close to last week. Almost fumbled the ball. Thank goodness he didn't. Or those death threats might have continued, which is awful. Please never do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Madison here at that price point. If you're just trying to get exposure to this game, both of these running backs are fine. And moving over to our build. Like I said, we're probably going to have some money to spend up at the running back position. I don't normally do this. So let's just do it for fun here. CMC at 9200 bucks eats up a large chunk of salary, but I'm okay with that. And then we're going to have to get a little bit cheap at running back. I'm not sure if we're going to get any exposure to that Miami Buffalo game. So getting Raheem Mostert here might not be the worst idea, or even James Cook. He's a little bit cheaper. I guess we'll go with Cook just because we might need some money left, but if we have the money for Mostert at the end, we could always flip-flop that. So let's roll out James Cook, 6300 bucks, and we'll move on to the pass catchers. And as you can see, we have a long list of options this week, but don't fret. I said this in a previous video. Never be intimidated by a large player pool. Because whoever you're using a quarterback or the stack you're rolling with, it's already putting you in a certain direction. So since we have Matthew Stafford, as fun as Jefferson, Tyree Kills, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams looks, it's not the route that we are going. We are looking down a little bit further at guys like Puka at $6,700. Tutu Atwell, $5,500. Run bag option, like a Michael Pittman at $6,500. That's kind of like the range we are in specifically here. Obviously, if you're using Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, AJ Osborne. You really just have to simplify it and make it easy on yourself because if you were taking the time to look at every single receiver, every single wide receiver, cornerback matchup, and all the matchups for that, which I don't even really think matters that much, it's just a bit of a waste of time and you're going to confuse yourself. And I just try to make it simple as possible. And that's what I'd recommend to you. So if you are someone that is using Tua, for example, you need to be looking at Tyree Killer, Jalen Waddle, then you got to run it back with a guy like Stephon Diggs, although you probably don't have the money for that. So you look at a Gabe Davis at $5,900 or even a Dalton Kincaid, a little bit cheaper. So there's ways to make it work and still play expensive, chalky players. Uh, looking for one-offs here that don't really involve any of the stacks that we talked about. Debo Samuel, I mean, obviously the guy's just a machine out there. It was awesome on, I think, Thursday night when no, with no Brandon Ayuk. I'm assuming he's going to be back, but someone's got to score on this offense. That's typically Debo, Ayuk, CMC. Kittle. No, I'm assuming this is going to be a combination of those guys, but Debo, as good as he is, he's going to get his opportunities. Uh, we talked about Puka, Pittman, Davis is fine for tournaments with Addison. Jacoby Myers, Devontae Adams, those are your clear runback options for the Raiders if you are using the Charger stacks. Now, again, I'm not sure which quarterback is going to end up getting rolled out. I'm hoping it's Jimmy G because the ball pretty much only goes Adams or Jacoby Myers' way, which makes it really nice and simple. So you just have to hope for the best there. Cortland Sutton, just way too cheap. We know the upside. I feel like he could have had like two or three touchdowns last week. I want to say two ended up not happening, but did get into the end zone an overall pretty solid game for Sutton. 
Nico Collins was unfortunately disappointing. There was opportunity, but he's still going to be solid this season. At 5100 bucks, I still think it's a little bit too cheap. And we have seen wide receivers have some success versus Pittsburgh's defense so far. I mean, if you look at the overall numbers, so far, it's a very small sample size, obviously, but they are 28th versus the position and allowing over 200 receiving yards per game. So I definitely think they are in play as cheap options. Tank Dell's price did rise. We got him really cheap last week. I think at 36 or 3,800, ended up having a monster game. The three K days are probably over, but I mean, I still think the price point's fair. If you're looking at both these wide receivers, averaging right around 85 yards per game, five catches, seven, seven and a half targets with a 20% target share. Both are going to be very viable options and are a little bit too cheap. CJ Stroud looks good and they definitely can feed them the ball. And Robert Woods is definitely not the answer in that offense. And Josh Palmer is going to be your chalk option of the week. 4000 bucks. Yes, I know Quentin Johnston does exist, but Josh Palmer knows the offense. He's had success with Justin Herbert before. Hard to imagine he's not going to hit value here at that price point. And if you were stacking that game up, he makes it extremely easy to double stack. All right, moving over to our build, I kind of already hinted at what we're going to do, but we're probably going to double stack with Puka and Tutu for Matthew Stafford here. Then we're going to run it back with one of the Colts, which don't really want to use Moss or Granson here. So we're pretty much just stuck with Michael Pittman. He would make the most sense for this build. Let's plug in Puka here, 6,700 bucks. We're going to throw in Tutu at $5,500. Unfortunately, at this point, we actually might have to drop down from CMC because once I plug in Pittman here, we're at 3300 bucks, which it is doable, especially with a cheap Josh Palmer, cheap tight end, cheap defense. But I'm not sure if it's actually going to fit. So if we have to take out CMC at the end, we will do it. But as for right now, let's move on to tight ends and defenses and we'll go from there. And I will tell you right now, tight end is pretty barren this week. So honestly, I would just play whoever fits, either it being your stack or really just the last guy that fits in. I don't really think it matters this week. If you are specifically trying to get Kirk Cousins stacks with TJ Hawkinson, obviously he's a fine option. Just nine targets per game this year, just an absolute menace. Love Hawkinson all season long, especially if he stays in the 6K range, which I think is a little bit too cheap. Should be 7K at some point. Tyler Higby, he would make sense with the build we're using, but I'm not going to triple stack Stafford. I'm not that insane. Joe Everett, if you're just using Justin Herbert or that game stack in general. Kincaid with Josh Allen. Zach Gertz is fine as a cheap one-off. I mean, the guy's just going to get targets every week. Obviously, sucked versus Dallas, but wasn't the game script I was expecting. I was expecting Arizona to be trailing all that game. Ended up not being the case. But either way, this didn't really do much at all. But still seeing just about seven targets per game on a 23% target share. And if you're looking for a cheapie, Smythe Smith, still haven't learned his name. Didn't really need to get used last week. They were just blowing them out. And the running backs did all the damage anyway, besides that Tyreek Hill opening touchdown on one of the first few offensive plays for the Dolphins. But if you're just looking for cheap exposure there, it should still see close to three to four targets. And the same thing I always do at defense. We are scrolling down and looking for the first viable team total that would make sense for the cheap defenses because I do not spend up. And it looks like Bills and Below are going to be a no-go. I think we see the chalk defense, though. The Browns at 2800 bucks, only a 19.5 applied team total, two and a half point favorites, 41.5 over under. They're playing at home. And yeah, that Browns defense has been really good this year. I'm a Browns fan, so not, I'm not being a homer. They've just been legit good with Jim Schwartz as their defensive coordinator. I believe they have only given up one touchdown uh, from the opposing offense this year, which was like that George Pickens 70-yard touchdown, I believe. Other than that, I mean, they've been, they've been amazing. They held Derrick Henry to, I forget how many yards, but it was awful last week. And the Bengals didn't scoring touchdowns versus them. The Titans only had a field goal. And like I said, the Steelers got that long touchdown. But besides that, I mean... A lot of talent on this defense, and they got a good coordinator now, so they're actually being used correctly. So the Browns' defense looks like they're going to be chalky. The Chargers, I mean, they don't look bad at the price with the team total, but I want that game to shoot out, so it wouldn't really make much sense for me to play the Chargers' defense. So besides that, if you're not playing the Browns, just pick one of these other mid-3K ones with low totals. But the Browns definitely look at the best defense to use, especially at their price point. 2800 bucks. All right, so moving over to our build to finish this off. I am not sure if we can afford CMC or not, but we're going to try at least. So at defense, let's plug in the Browns. They're cheap, 2800 bucks. That'll free up some salary at tight end. We can roll one of the cheap guys out. I don't really care who it is, to be honest. You just want to throw in Zach Ertz at 3200 bucks. That actually is perfect because that leaves us $4,100. And I know for certain there is a wide receiver this week that's in a great spot. That's going to see increased production at $4,000. And that's Joshua Palmer. So that's actually a perfect fit. So looking at the lineup here, it fits the general rules that I would like for a single determined build where we're double stacked and we do a run back option. 
Not the sexiest stack in the world, but we have Matthew Stafford with Puka Nakua, Tutu Abo, two fun names there, ran back with Michael Pittman. We were able to afford CMC. We have James Cook to get exposure to the Buffalo Bills offense. Zach Ertz fits, Joshua Palmer. Very chalky, but since we don't have like a full-on chalk stack, since we're rolling the Rams out there with the Colts run back option and Michael Pittman, and it at least gives us exposure to that Chargers game. And then we have the Browns defense who just the lowest total and they're the cheapest defense we could find. That's going to be a wrap. I hope you did enjoy it. Even if you didn't, consider liking the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I'm more than happy to get back to you. But I wish you the best of luck and I'll see you all next time.